you know, the you know the old muscle cars, V8s. Mm-hmm. And, Where you rev them and you let uh, up and they pop. Oh, yeah, exactly. And then you do, it's just there's no sound like it. So it's kind of a nostalgia thing, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But you're going into that uh, new technology of like, well, like they're doing it with the, uh, you know, the semi-trucks, you know, making, uh, you know, Tesla and all those guys are making the electric, electric trucks. trucks. Yeah. So and we're do and we're doing one of the uh, like plastic parts for the I think it's like a Tesla van you know that's kind of like a, you know a transit type van. Okay. So um, is is it for Tesla or yeah, for other competitions? For, uh, no, it's for Tesla. It's really? like a, it's an after it's an uh, I guess it's an aftermarket part. Is it for one of those guys who are customizing the yeah. Teslas after? Yeah, yeah, it's for the guys that are customizing. Okay. So they get the vans and then they customize it and so to, to fit their need or yeah. whatever they're doing, you know. Very cool. So, yeah, so it's uh so you know everybody's starting to get into that industry. So Well, how how did a Midwest company like you get involved doing work for a high-tech company like Tesla. How did well, you how did you get that business? Well, that's just if I may a, ask. Well, it's just uh that is just well through the people you know. So, uh we work um we work with these big companies like you know, we were talking about earlier. We mm-hmm. work with the big companies that just can't get that done. And so uh what they did is these big companies came to us because they were turning away business. Like a guy would say, come to them and say, hey, I need 50 of these. Mm-hmm. I need 100 of these. And we do like the onesies, twosies. Right. Because we're small, you know. Um, and they're like, but they're like, we're turning away with a guy, all these customers. So what if we slow down, you know, <laughs> and we're turning these people away? You know, we're not going to be maybe doing some of these huge 100,000, 50,000 runs. So they're like, uh, we need to keep these customers in house. So mm-hmm. maybe those customers might turn into a big customer later on, as like technology changes. Like uh-huh. you know, with Tesla, you're, you know, coming around. So that's how we got that. That you know, because the guys like kind of, you know, Tesla's with going into that market it's just early, with those like uh, transit vans and okay. semis. So, so they may need twelve. Yeah, not a hundred and twelve or a thousand and twelve. Yeah. yeah, and you do the twelve. Yeah. Okay. So that and then because they're like. <laughs> No, we, we can't do 12. We would have to, you know, break the line down, mm-hmm. do 12, and then go back to the 50,000. You right. know what I mean? They're right. not going to do that. But they were tired of, uh, man, we're turning everybody away. So they're like, what do we do? They're like, we got to go to a smaller manufacturer that mm-hmm. can, you know, just turn those around like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. So that's where, you know, like you said, in this time that people are trying to find, you know, ways to do do things. And, you know, that's how you do it. So we got into with these big companies. We, we do that for a few big companies is help them out, you know, with the, their smaller runs. So they, they do 99.9% of everything in-house, but that 0.1% that they need, they're not going to tool up for that, and that's when you get the phone call. Yeah. Okay. All the time, that's what we're getting right now, too, because they're so busy, you know, doing a lot of the big things. and <laughs> But we couldn't do, you know, like say they had their, you know, 20%. We couldn't do it. But we can do that, you know, percentage. You know, we, we'll grow with them. But we just can't do that, uh, those big runs. You know, we're not, Mm -hmm. you know, geared towards that. Which gets us back to a conversation we had earlier in the podcast uh, about getting warm bodies to do the job. Uh, You folks have a rather unique business. But then all businesses, all small businesses are rather unique, okay? And you'll get somebody in with a handful of skills, and you train them. You will train them to do the to do what you need, correct? Yeah. Oh yeah. And and I know your company. Uh, you guys don't pay seven bucks an hour. No. Okay. Well, nobody usually really can today because you're not going to get anybody. Well, and that, that, you know, well, yeah, I mean, okay, <laughs> you're going to get somebody, but are you really going to get somebody? That's yeah, the guy's yeah. like, I'm leaving for the rest of the day. My toe hurts. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So e- exactly. So exactly. that's what you'd get for your seven dollars. So you and you've got to pay a wage to get people. I mean, people are like. You can get a commodity item made in China for cheap. You can get a commodity individual who's not going to do much for you for cheap. Yeah. But you know what? You're going to you're going to you're going to get what you pay for. Exactly. Uh, if you pay them a good wage so that they have a family and a house, uh, not trying to be ignorant, but they have to come to work. Well, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. they have bills have to, to pay, pay for it. Yeah. I had a guy one time. This is early on in my career. I got a promotion and. The, the guy took me out of the shop and put me into an office 
and to manage a customer service area. And I was glad to get the job. I wanted the job. I wanted to, to get out of the shop. I was tired of standing. I was tired of, I just wanted to change. And this was an opportunity to stay in the company and to just get a new career, but not lose my pay, not lose my seniority, not go to a different company, learn a new system. It was like getting a new job, but staying where I was. Okay. And the guy hired me for the position and I thanked him for it. But I asked him, I said, be honest. Why did you hire me for this position? Because after all, I mean, the other people who applied for this job were probably a little better qualified than me. And you know what he told me? He smiled. He said, because you have a wife at home that doesn't work and you have four kids and a mortgage, you will do anything I tell you to do and, 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 and say yes, sir, and do it with a smile because you have to. At least he was smart enough to realize <laughs> that, too. Though. And he was right. Yeah. He was yeah. absolutely. He said, I could tell you run through that wall. If you tell me no and I fire you, your family goes on welfare. That ain't going to happen. Well, it's who wants and needs that job. You there's, a big, there's a big difference. Yeah. Want and need. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, I'm going to take this job because I want to buy a cool car. Eh, I don't like the job. I'll get the cool car some other time. Yeah. I have to have this job because I have to buy groceries for the children. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Different. Oh, yeah. I've had, we've had people that, you know, work for a week to get money for like, I need money for a vacation. And then yeah. they're gone. So well, I, I did that one time. Yeah. Uh, I, I've, I've, I've always worked two, sometimes three jobs. And just because. And, uh. We, need, we wanted to go on vacation. We wanted to take the family to Destin, Florida, but we had no money. So how do we do that? I know. I'll throw newspapers. I saw an ad in the newspaper that said, throw these newspapers, $125 a week to throw newspapers. It was the free newspaper that shows up in your in your driveway on a on a Saturday morning, okay? And it paid 125 bucks. I had an old beat-up 1979 Mazda GLC that I bought for 500 bucks and was paid for, got 40 miles a gallon. Okay. So that car basically ran for almost free. There was, there was no, okay, do the math, 50 cents an hour, blah, blah. No, I could run that car almost for free. Okay. So I piled it on Friday night, finished up on Saturday morning through the newspapers. We needed $1,100 to go on vacation. Bubba, as soon as I hit $1,100, I told him I'm done. I said, what do you mean you're done? You're doing a nice job. I said, mm, yeah, but I'm going on vacation. I just needed the money for this. Yeah, and I was so. gone. Yeah. But that was my third job, so that was okay. Yeah, yeah. You're like, I don't need any more jobs. <laughs> they offered me more money. They offered, I said, no, I ain't staying. I'm not staying. I'm done. Yep. I'm done. Now, I may come back next year if we want to go on vacation again, but, yeah. but I'm done. See, but then there's a lot where you get the how much, you know, what you pay a person yes. and what you get. You That's know. exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah, um, but the opportunity that's out there, Charles, t- is just incredible. If I people say it's so hard to be a young person getting into this market today, I would say I'd give my right arm to be a young person because of the opportunity that's you're, out there. Yeah, you're right, especially on, in this country. Yeah, you're right on the cusp of something really big. So if you're seeing, you know, as things come and all the opportunities that are coming back to the country. They're setting it up. And if they do the whole huge infrastructure package, there's going to be, I mean, that'll be just mind boggling. Well, and, you know, you just, but you just don't know. You don't know yet. You don't, you know, but that, but it's coming, but there's other well, things. You're a hundred percent right. Here's my problem with that. And that was one of the things, uh, president Obama was the first one to talk about that after the great recession in 2018. He said, look, we're going to take, and we're going to rebuild this whole country and spend all this money on infrastructure. I mm-hmm. thought, wow, that's a great idea. Yeah. Is it a lot of government spending? Yeah. But if you make roads better, bridges better, uh, rapid transit systems better, that's going to benefit absolutely everybody. Makes everything better. And, and guess what? And we need it. That's a job. <laughs> you can't <laughs> import that from China. No. You can't import the guy that pours concrete. No. You can't import concrete from China or dump trucks services from China. Exactly. But Obama did, said he was going to do it and didn't follow through. Trump has said he's going to do it and hasn't followed through. Yeah. I don't know why they don't follow through on this because this is one big government spending deal that I would be for. Yeah, yeah. But they don't want to do it. I, yeah. don't, I don't get that. I think once, you know, once everything calms down, if, you know, if we get calmed down, that I think he'll push it through. You know what I mean? I, I, if we can get everybody on that same page, and maybe, too, with him being a businessman, it won't be as much. You know what I mean? Because you know how the government jobs go. You're like, you know, spending, you know, $300 for a battery. 
Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, hey, don't need a, we can pair that. Can we do 150 for a battery? You know, it just, mm-hmm. it's just all that thing, which, and a lot of people are doing. I, you know, we hit those too, those contracts, and you're starting to see them uh, maybe help and buy smarter. Mm-hmm. Know, just, you know, and that's what it is. It's, but a lot of people might have had, you know, hey, you know, you put a little bit in that in my back pocket. You know, I have a friend that has a friend, and we're going to, that happens. Too. We're going to milk this, you know, contract for everything it's worth. So. Un- unfortunately, that does happen. Yeah. But you mentioned when things settle down. Uh, I assume you're talking about the the civil unrest and all that that's yeah. going on. Yeah. Um. And amongst the, you know, with I mean, well, you got COVID, all that stuff. You know, yeah. it's just all kind of hitting at the same time. So. Uh. I will. I will. I will tell you this, Charles. And this is the first time I've talked to anybody about this. So breaking news on the James Strong <laughs> show. I am always a glass half full guy. And for the first time in my life, I'm seeing all this mess and I'm thinking, man, I want to believe that we're going to get through this, that we're going to get past this. I really want to believe that. But friend, I'm, I'm starting to have my doubts. I've never been that way in my entire life, but I'm truly starting to have my doubts. Well, and, and the funny thing you say that, I'm a, I'm, and my wife will... You know, she'll tell you the same thing that I'm a glass is empty person, you know, <laughs> <laughs> there's no half full. And so, but I do see, I do in, I know some people and I see some things coming down, you know, down the pike where, you know, it, it's, it's not what we, not every, it's not what we see. It's not what it seems. Everything mm. is not what it seems. So there's, uh, there's light at the end of the tunnel, you know? And what's, uh, what's that light inform <laughs> me, make me, make me more into a, uh, more towards the glass half full versus the glass half empty. Guy. Well, I, there's law and order is going to come back to this country and that's, that's what we're headed towards. You know, like they say, you know, justice is the wheels of justice turn slow, but mm-hmm. once it gets going, you just don't want to be on that other side of, <laughs> of yeah. that, but it's coming and that's what we're trying to get to. That's why all the people that I know in, in some of these uh, higher positions, they're, Saying law and or they're bringing law and order back, but you know it takes time. They have to. People are like what? When is it? And they're like, hey, we have to do everything by the book. You can't you know, shortcut anything. You have to cross every T, dot every I, to make sure everything is there. Because once you turn that switch, you don't want anything, you know, fallen by the wayside. You want it to. You want it to go right like a machine. You don't mm-hmm. want anything out of place. So they're trying to fix everything and get everything in the right place so when it comes online it works seamlessly and it's fair like the same you get the same law as me and you mm-hmm. don't see that today in yep. in our culture you know the people are skating by yep and you're like hey if that was you and me and we're you know upstanding citizens mm-hmm. we'd be in jail right now yeah and we're gonna probably we'd probably be in jail for a long time well and i i, I s- Again, I, I love the Wall Street Journal because they throw perspectives out there that I see nowhere else. And they had the case of a lady in Kenosha, Wisconsin, okay, where they're having they're having a ton of trouble. Uh, I mean, uh, oh yeah, Jacob Jacob Blake was the black man shot in the back by the cop. Okay, yeah. now the cop was immediately suspended, and people are upset because they haven't brought charges against him. Well, first of all, you, you got to. You, well, you can't to, just bring no. charges against somebody. You no. have to, it, you if you just you have, have an investigation. That's correct. And what charges do you bring against him? Well, and he's not guilty till proven innocent. You're that, innocent well, till proven guilty. That's 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 true too. In the meantime, he's been taken off the street. Now, yeah. Well, they, they do, but they, you know, you do that. That's what. And I've had uh, friend cops, and they've shot somebody, and they have to go on leave, mm-hmm. and there has to be an investigation, right? Because if that guy did it, you know, with malice or something, you you got to go. Yeah, now you know, I, as a police officer, and, and and I'm not going to make an assumption as to what happened. Because, no, well, because you can't. Any, any, I wasn't there. Exactly. Anybody who does is is a fool. Yes, you have to let the investigation go, and then let's let's see where it comes from there. Yeah. Uh, but I will tell you this: uh, I read a story about a lady who had a pie making business in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and. It was a hard. It was always hard, okay. But she baked pies and had a little restaurant where they could go in and, and make the pies. Well, with COVID, state of uh, <laughs> Wisconsin shut her down for a while yeah. and then let her reopen Shocker. with with restrictions, okay. So business was hard. COVID made it harder. But then she said, "Okay, I don't want to get rid of any of my people because they're good people, and I'm gonna they're they're 
pie bakers are good pie bakers are hard to get. They don't oh, want to yeah. get rid of these people because they'll go do something else and they may even